I'll do my introduction uh, while we wait. My name is Ben Gwynn. I am a former middle school English teacher, and I work with an education technology company called EverFi. Um, and the, the session that we're going to do today is going to be a little bit unique. Uh, being a former teacher, a lot of the times I would go to professional development sessions and I would learn about different strategies and pedagogies uh, that I would have to do a lot of homework for to be able to implement what I learned in my classroom. What's going to be unique about this is that you're going to leave this session with hours worth of student-driven, standards-aligned, engaging instruction that's done for you already. So it's something really turnkey. And what's the best thing is that everything that you're going to learn about today is available completely for free for schools. Jenny, you want to jump awesome. back? Awesome. Thanks, Bet. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Bet. I'm so sorry. Usually, the kids were getting home across the street from school, and usually, uh, usually we somehow miss that. So she was paying attention today. I apologize. Um, but thank you, Ben. So um, as Ben said, he's going to um, talk to us about um, student interest in STEM careers and sharpening their STEM skills. So um, I will miss. I will skip that part of it. I'll just do the housekeeping. Um, so. Go ahead, keep yourself muted throughout today's presentation. Um, as uh, I said earlier, we are recording the presentation. So tomorrow I will be sending everybody who registered um, the recording as well as a copy of Ben's slide deck. Um, so you'll be able to um, go back, you know, review anything, whatever the case may be. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, we do want your interaction, so please feel free to ask those questions, but do so in the chat window in the group chat. Um, I will be monitoring that window and um, interrupting Ben as questions come in, um, when he takes a break, when it's appropriate, all those good things. Um, I will go ahead and ask those questions. So please, um, if you do have anything added to that group chat, um, we do want to hear from you. Um, we love interaction. Um, Today you'll uh, be getting a one uh, PDH for attending live. So at the end of the session in that group chat window, I will be putting the link to that PDH. Um, and so just keep an eye out for that. And um, it will be available through midnight tonight. So go in, um, put that in there and, or uh, fill out the form, whatever. And um, you will, it will be, uh, saved, recorded, so that um, you can apply that to your ISB um, credits. So um, I think that's it. Uh, without further ado, Ben, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, and I will catch up back on the uh, backside. Again, questions I'll be monitoring, so please add those in there. Thanks. Great. Uh, and this is just an upcoming webinar. These are upcoming webinars to learn about them. Um, there's the, I'll do those at the end, Ben. Oh, the end. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, again, thank you, everybody, today for joining. Um, I, I mentioned what's going to make this session a little bit unique is that you're going to be able to go to school tomorrow and share this resource and start your day uh, with some resources that are going to be very turnkey for you to implement into your instructional time. Being a former teacher, uh, I have to be a pain and start off with a little do now. So um, enter into the chat box. Just there's a question up here. How does your school incorporate STEM instruction? I know that can be kind of a, a long question to, to answer, but um, or if you want to answer how to any unique ways that your school incorporates STEM instruction or do they even really do it? So just looking to get some feedback in terms of how it's integrated into your instructional time in the classroom if people want to chat that into the box. Okay, somebody's at a community college with math and science, technology courses, STEM class this year, it's part of a student's choice class. Yeah, that's something that's becoming more, more and more common at schools. Robotics, maker spaces, yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, those are definitely some things, you know, robotics clubs and, and makerspaces, those are becoming more common. Uh, a class dedicated to tech, STEM lab, robotics clubs, great. Good. And those are things that typically I'm seeing um, uh, a lot of interest in it from, from students. And, and for Miss Agan, sorry if I mispronounced your name, your school's not utilizing STEM yet. Uh, this will be a great way for you to bring this into uh, your school and same for eCloney, um, you do your own STEM design projects, this could be something you can also add into it. Okay. 
Um, just some housekeeping on our end uh, from an audio perspective. If you're, if you're having any trouble, there's the number there. Um, if you're having trouble with your internet, I should say, yeah, I recommend calling in. Um, IDA will monitor the chat box, so please comment anything in. We'll answer the questions in real time if possible. And there'll be an opportunity at the end to, answer, uh, to ask and for me to answer other questions as well. There's uh, something there on the chat box or on the screen, I should say, uh, to follow us on Twitter um, at EverFiK12. You can always tag us with the hashtag EverFiEmpowers. Uh, we'll be, they'll be sending out the recording afterwards so you can reference this later if need be. Again, I did my introductions. I'm a former eighth grade middle school English teacher. I now live in St. Louis, Missouri, but I help support people in Illinois uh, to raise awareness about our programs. Um, again, we're going to cover today a digital resource uh, that is called Endeavor, and the focus for it is to teach students about STEM careers and the everyday application of STEM concepts in their lives and also introduce them to different types of STEM career opportunities for them later on. So we're going to talk about why STEM. Why is it something that, that's important today? I'm going to go over this online resource, which you'll gain access to. We'll ask some questions, and I'm going to show you how to get started. You'll be able to, again, test this out at the end of today's presentation. Really excited to host this in partnership with the Illinois Dig Digital Educators uh, Alliance. So for those of you who may not have worked with us before, just for a quick introduction to EverFi, we are an education technology company and we create online courses or resources for what we call critical skills. Things that students may not encounter in their math or English class, but they need to be, uh, to be successful in their careers and life. Our goal as a company is to aim to educate the whole child. So we include critical life skills in our courses that uh, will teach students how to communicate effectively, how to file taxes, how to fill out a FAFSA application, how to build st strong study habits. This is a list of all the online student-driven resources we have that we offer to schools. And you'll be able to bring all these to your schools at no cost to your school or district uh, through the help of local and national sponsors who provide the funding for all these programs. The hardest thing about my job is to convince people they're getting something for free. There's no limit on licenses or length of period of time. Uh, the support is free as well. So if you have questions or need help afterwards, you'll be provided with this local schools manager that live in Illinois and we can provide uh, you with support. And everything here is supplemental. So the program I'm gonna cover, it covers is about three to four hours long and consists of six lessons that are student driven, standards aligned and have assessments built in. So as a teacher, our resources enable you to be more of a facilitator as students go through these self-paced lessons. So this is a list of all of our offerings, but today we're gonna to focus on uh, the Endeavor STEM Literacy and Career Exploration. So I want to talk to you a little bit of how we, the background for how we developed this course and the research that went into the development of Endeavor. So as educators, we're no strangers to the statistics around STEM interest and the need to build more STEM, a robust STEM pipeline and products and offerings for the resources we have for teachers. We found this in our internal research as well. While the majority of students believe that it is important to have STEM knowledge, there is a major discrepancy in terms of how that translates into pursuing STEM after high school. And this is something we've heard from you, the educators in our network that we regularly seek feedback from. Uh, we specifically heard that they want more information and resources about STEM career exploration. So here are some stats where people are saying that uh, students think it's important to learn about these specific topics, but when you ask them about if they're interested in pursuing these types of careers, uh, there's a big gap there. How do we, how do we um, you know, try to alleviate that gap and, and try to gain students to become more interested in STEM careers and educate them about opportunities? This is just a quote we see that from the business side as well. A study from Dell recently suggested 85% of the jobs uh, students, uh, today's students will assume later on do not currently exist today. So couple that with the expectation that the vast majority of opportunities in the next decade will require STEM skills. We have a responsibility to educate our students about STEM topics and expose them to STEM careers. For each of our courses, we like to develop a central mission to guide our thinking. For this course, we've chosen to focus on STEM careers as our locus. We're excited to show you how this manifests throughout the course experience when students are going through it. 
Similarly, we'd like to anchor all of our courses around critical pillars that comprise the components of the programs. For Endeavor, we want to make sure that we're exposing people to real professionals. So in the course, students are going to encounter a variety of STEM career opportunities and pathways. These careers come from, come from across the diverse industries served by STEM, as well as different educational and skill requirements students um, can be what, later on from what they'll see in the program. We like to have deep personalization, so the learners are gonna uh, you know, see the content that's more tailored to their interests. They're gonna go through different components of the course and they're encouraged to explore different careers and content that connect to their specific interests and skills. So we wanna make sure this is really relevant for all individuals just, uh, you know, and taking into consideration the different types of likes and dislikes they may have. We want to make sure it's grounded in real world activities. So it's going to expose the gap between students' perception of school science versus science in the real world. So Endeavor is going to highlight novel real world applications of STEM in their surrounding world and connect it to student interest in STEM careers. And then we want to make sure there's individual takeaway. So throughout the course, students are going to contribute to an individualized field guide a digital resource containing actionable next steps and course pathing suggestions for students to pursue afterwards as a way for them to have a takeaway for what they can be doing later on. Why do we take this approach? So we heard from teachers on our network and a critical review of current academic literature. We've pulled the following tenets from which to build this later offering that we have. So middle school is a turning point. Uh, studies show that they factor predicting STEM career interest at the end of high school was by gauging interest at the start of high school. So many students' attitudes um, and careers are about in STEM careers are formed by the age of 14. So we wanna make sure that we're uh, you know, providing students and inspiring them with that drop off before it begins. So at the early ages, really getting their interest in, into STEM careers. Role models matter. So unsurprisingly, when students are exposed to role models who represent them, they are more likely to perceive a particular career as relevant to their interests. This perception of relevance is even more important than confidence or perceived abilities when it comes to motivating students to pursue STEM careers. We also want to change perceptions. So students' perceptions of STEM has been unchanged for decades. Most students have little material understanding of how STEM is a part of their daily lives and still perceive scientists as a monolithic identity that is usually old and male and typically white. I'm gonna show you uh, what the digital experience is like, is like for the Endeavor resource that I'm gonna share with you all today. So big picture, the Endeavor course uh, focuses on STEM career exploration for students. It, it says it's more ideal for grades students six through nine. It can be used with higher grades. This is just where it fits based off of standards and reading grade levels. So to inspire curiosity in STEM careers, this course is gonna ask students what they wanna be and how will they get there. It's about three to four hours long and it consists of six different online lessons. There's no software to download. The six different lessons are something that teachers and students can go through in any particular order to make sure it's aligning best to what they wanna teach and fit in their classroom. It's typically designed for implementation in some type of career technical ed education classroom. The standards align to Common Core, uh, sorry, Common Career Technical Core, uh, Common Core State Standards, and Next Generation Science Standards. This is just an overview of what the course looks like. So there's six different lessons in Endeavor and Endeavor, as well as a field guide. In the designing a prototype lesson, they're going to create a prototype for a sneaker and learn about graphic design. In the home, to your uh, home of the future, they're gonna learn about smart technology and how it integrates into home daily usage. In building a perfect playlist, they're gonna learn about algorithms, which is something that is at the heart of a lot of the applications we use on our phone or TVs. In medical machines, they're gonna go into a doctor's office to learn about different types of medical devices. The, uh, for this pers specific presentation though, I'm gonna focus on the last two, the data champions and game development studio lessons and take a deep dive into those. So each of the six lessons that we have um, in the STEM activity, they follow a similar type of framework that I'm showing here. Students are gonna begin with a pre-assessment. They don't need to have any prerequisite knowledge on any of the specific topics, that's completely fine. They're gonna be introduced to the topic, they're gonna be shown different types of careers which exist in that field. And then it's gonna move on to a main activity like designing an algorithm for a predictive playlist for a music, a music streaming app, 
or reconfiguring a smart house that's gone haywire with the different devices it has. After the activity, they are prompted to reflect on what they enjoyed. Then careers are suggested to them based off of their answers. If they're inter interested in that career, they can save it to a field guide they have to look at later on. As you can see throughout the course, students are exposed to STEM careers and can save them into their personal field guide, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Personalization is really key. So we wanna make sure that we're making this a unique experience for all students, regardless of their demographics. So before they actually start, they're gonna take a quiz to determine uh, what their likes and dislikes are. It's gonna ask them about their learning style. So they're gonna be asked questions like, what do, they, what do you do when, you, uh, when you're faced with a new challenge? How do you typically like to respond to that? What's your working style? Some people are really disorderly. Some people are very organized. Some people are more in the middle. It's going to ask them which type of activities they maybe like to do, which types of projects they would like to work on. How do you feel about giving advice? Do you like to work in groups or work, with, uh, work by yourself? And the purpose of this is that it's gonna make different career cards for students, which will make everything unique. So it's gonna identify a different type of personality profile you have. That way the careers that I'm going to be exposed to are gonna be different than Chad's or Lana's or Janet's. Here's an example of one of the career cards that students see after completing a lesson. They're gonna learn about the training they will need after high school to pursue this type of career, the skills that would make them successful in that role, the average salary, and also what they can do now to move into that specific field in the future. So they're gonna be able to toggle through to learn about the different types of projects and degrees and skills required for all these different careers in the area of STEM. There's a portfolio, a portfolio that they can revisit later. It's gonna have uh, a list of all the different careers they were exposed to and liked. They can like or dislike a career and it will offer up different ones that maybe they would wanna pursue. So that's all saved into this career portfolio. There's also gonna be different badges they've earned from the skills they've developed for while they're going through the course. It's gonna tell them how they like to approach people, work on problems and approach organizational skills. So now I'm gonna dive into what the course actually looks like from a student's perspective. Before was the uh, pre-assessment or, or introductory field guide survey they take just to learn more about their background, which will help align the correct careers. But here's the main dashboard for the course. Again, there are six lessons. Students are gonna select the module or lesson they wanna complete. And again, they can go through it in any order. You'll be able to look at a curriculum guide to see which of the lessons maybe align more with what you want the students to be learning, or you can give them the freedom to explore as well for whatever fits best. Again, I'm gonna uh, dive deeper into the data champions lesson right now. So yeah, the data champions module is set up where you're in a sports arena and learners are gonna explore how to solve challenges by using data. Through problem-based learning, learners will compare sets of data prioritize data in decision-making, and manipulate data as well. Learners are gonna connect these data an an analysis skills to STEM careers, which will require research, the scientific method, and analysis of data. I should note there's audio built into this course, so the students aren't just reading the content that's on there, it's being read out to them aloud, and the uh, closed captioning here is, is presented as well. So each of the STEM uh, in my world lessons follow a similar type of framework. Students are gonna, uh, are gonna begin with a pre-assessment. So again, no prerequisite knowledge. They'll be asked five questions in the beginning about their specific interest related and uh, content related to the course or lesson. Here, students are gonna go into a team store and help the manager make decisions about what hours to be open and how much to sell jerseys for to get maximum profit. All of these decisions are based on data that students will need to use uh, and analyze later on. You'll see bolded words and plus signs so students can see the definitions of the particular terms. Uh, I should note this reads the content again to students. There's also gonna be a glossary that students have access to and that you'll have access to. So if these terms aren't familiar, again, you can click on the plus sign to get the definition of it, which will be read aloud to the students. And they'll also be able to access that in a glossary on their page, and you'll also have access to all the key terms and definitions as well that might be more challenging for students. 
Next, students are going to help three athletes maximize their game by looking, and looking at and analyzing performance data. They're going to do an activity where they're calculating pass, completing, pass completion percentage, and they'll be clicking to throw the football at specific, time, at specific times to make sure that the athletes are, are catching the ball, and then they'll have to calculate the completion percentage afterwards. Here, they're going to help find the best spin and release timing for maximum shot accuracy. So they're using a device that's going to help a student become a better shooter, and they're doing this activity here to help the athlete become better and a more efficient sh uh, shot taker. It's going to shoot out the data from the activities the students did, and then it'll ask them to answer questions and have takeaways from the different types of stats that the athletes had and performed. And in the end, the culminating activity, what they're doing is deciding Again, what hours they should be using based off of different stats they've learned, but they're going through these activities initially to learn about how to calculate data. And then at the end, they're using what they've learned to decide how they should, um, uh, you know, keep what hours they should keep the store open or closed at to maximize uh, profits at, for sales. Is the audio captioned? I work at the Illinois School for oh, the Deaf. Yes. I, I guess I answered that already, Lana. So there's audio built in, but there's, um, there's the text appears on the dashboard as well. There's a lot of offline lessons you can use as well, which I'll show you, or offline resources you can use as well to help reinforce some of the content and, and teach it in a more differentiated approach for students who learn at different levels. So back to the dashboard. Great, we finished that lesson on data champions, and we're going to take a look at another module that students can go through. I should say it's also student-driven, so I might be going through this at a different pace than than George, who um, is a little bit quicker than me. So George can finish this lesson and go on to another one. It saves all the progress. So if they don't finish before the bell rings or a fire alarm goes off, it's gonna bring the students back to where they were when they left off the next time they, they go through the lesson. So in this lesson, students are gonna become video game producers. Students love playing video games now. It's possible to become a professional e-gamer. Students often want to learn about how they can do that or even develop games. And that's what they're going to do in the game development studio lesson. So to start, students are asked to look at a customer survey to determine if a game that the team is thinking of developing, it's called Bunny Biker Races, will, appear to, will appeal to consumers. So they're learning about demographic information. They find that people are more interested in zombies and unicorns, so students have the option of changing the idea of the game to zombie, unicorn, treasure hunt. They're asked if they would like to pivot their idea to that game design instead, so they have some autonomy in terms of the types of video game they would like to develop while they're going through this program as well. Students are introduced to the various roles on the game development team. They learn what they do and how they communicate their unique value. So they're going to learn about, again, the specific type of role, what their responsibilities are for the different, all the different team members that go into creating a game or software program. Throughout the course, students are able to click on key vocabulary words. I mentioned that already. So it's going to introduce them to the different types of uh, programming languages or different types of terms that students may not be familiar with if they need a refresher. When students complete a game design document and decide which team members should work on a specific component of the games based on their skills. So they're going to be, they're going to learn about these different types of roles. Then they're going to be asked questions about, okay, so for this portion of uh, the game development process, which of the people would be the best to use for this specific task. After they've learned about what the sound engineer does or what the software engineer does, they then have to decide where those roles go in based off of the specific tasks that are outlined. They're gonna also develop the method in which the game is designed, learn more about the process for the roles, again, and who's the best fit for the specific tasks. They have to decide which team members must collaborate on the design sprint. So they get the, the term sprint may not be familiar to students. They get it'll, it's basically uh, the time frame at which projects need to be completed before the next release for the version of the course or program is ready. So they learn about key terminology related to that as well. Throughout the course, there's gentle nudges and feedback for students when they pick the incorrect answers. 
So here they're asked to choose the ideal person on the team to play a specific role, and they get redirected based off of their answers if they're not correct. So it has the remediation built in if the students need help. They also aren't able to just click and go through to the end. The audio uh, will read the content, and they're not able to click that try again or run or next button until it's reached to a certain point. So they're not able to click all the way through and proceed to the end and finish the assessment. Students are going to learn about, uh, then learn about an IDE or an integrated development environment, which is a set of tools to write and build and debug a program. Here, there's a lot of terms they would click on to, to learn about to be able to answer the assessment questions correctly at the end. Next, students will choose which programming language they want to use for the game. They'll click view to learn about the different types of programming languages. Again, some of this could be uh, pretty elementary for them, for those of you who have coding clubs or robotics classes, but for other people, it might be new content for them as well. After that, students will participate in quality assurance testing, which is what game designers and software developers use or do before they release a product. It's a way to do uh, testing on what, um, you know, to make sure that everything is looking smooth and will run smoothly for the users. So they learn about that process as well for quality assurance testing. Then they're gonna review the bugs to see what needs to be fixed. So students have to sort the various user problems and decide if they should send it to development, ignore it, or take a closer look themselves first before they escalate the issue. Once they determine that several parts of the game were boring to users, they submit it to their team for redesign to make sure it's more engaging. So the designers might have one thought process, but the quality assurance testers might think something needs to be, uh, it might not be as intuitive or it might not be as engaging. So they get introduced to that process as well. Finally, students see the results of the launch of their game. They learn what they did well and what they could improve the next time. Students will go through a 10 question post assessment at the end of each of the six lessons. So you're at, you as a teacher or educator are getting data and feedback based off of what the students are learning. You'll see what they learned in the beginning, what they learned at the end, so you can see what the knowledge gains were from start to finish. Once students complete all the six lessons, they get a certificate. It will say, congratulations, Jane. You're certified in Endeavor. A STEM career exploration resource. Students typically like those types of things. It's, it's a nice reward for having them complete a, a, complete a project. Uh, they also are able to retake assessments. So you saw this student did not pass this specific lesson for medical machines. They can retake the, uh, they can retake the assessment and educators will also see how many times a specific student retook an assessment as well. So that was an overview. Each of these lessons, again, take about 30 or so minutes. It might take some students longer than others based off of what they're, uh, you know, they might have a baseline knowledge for this content, but roughly 30, 35 minutes for each of the six lessons that you can break up and use in any specific order, space them out throughout the year. So the goal for the course, the recap, is to teach students about the devices they use every day in their lives, you know, they're constantly using Netflix or Spotify that have algorithms built into it. It's a way to teach them about the work that goes into creating those types of software or applications. And then again, introduce them to different types of career paths they can pursue to spark their interest and learn about the careers available for them related to what they're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis around the areas of STEM. So that was a, a deep dive into those specific modules. I want to, I'm curious if there's any questions about the course as a whole. So if you want to chat into the chat box, let me know if there's any specific questions, whether it's content related or if it's about structure. Um, it works on Chromebooks, desktops, laptops. Uh, it is web-based, so there's no software to download. I know in Illinois, there's a uh, strong focus now on e-learning days when schools are out. This is web-based, so it's something students can be doing from home as well. But any particular questions about the resources? Good over you, don't have any questions, okay. Um, again, big picture, it's something you can bring to your classrooms tomorrow and have students start on to learn about 
the everyday application of STEM and it will create time for you. They're going through this individually and you can become more of a, facilit a facilitator, go around, see who needs help, et cetera. Okay. And Sue, uh, I'm going to provide you all with my contact information afterwards. My job and the job of the people I work with in Illinois is literally to provide any type of support we can to educators. So if you have questions, I'll share my phone number, my email address, call, text, email me. I'm available to do any types of trainings over the phone or perhaps even in person based off of where you are. Um, I want to show you all how to get started. And again, um, I, I want to make sure I'm doing a little I do, we do, you do. So I'm going to show you the process for how to sign up and navigate the teacher dashboard. And then I'm going to post the information for you uh, to look at so you can get started as well. Um, I'm going to change the view right now. So you should be able to still see my screen, I believe. Um, you're going to first go to our website, which is everfi.net. And you're going to click. Enter. We're good. We can see it. You can see it? Good. Yeah, we're good. And you're going to go to everfi.net. And again, I'm going to walk you through it. I have this spelt out in slides, but I just want to show you first. You're going to go to everfi.net. You're going to click register. Uh, I'm doing a demo, so it's okay. Um, uh, sorry. Everfi.net. Log out. Sorry, you're going to click register. You're going to click K through 12 teacher. You're going to type in your state and your school, high school, and you're going to click next. When you get there, you're going to choose, you're going to fill out your profile, create a username and password, choose the course that you're interested in, agree to terms, and click next. Then you're going to be on a teacher dashboard. This is what your dashboard looks like. Um, a couple of things you can click if you want to try the course from a, uh, a student's perspective you can click where it says view course this is going to let you demo the course from a student's perspective so you can try this out on your own if you'd like there's also a button that says resources this is going to show you um, a lot of resources you can use to reinforce instruction or learn more about the program as a whole so there's for instance a course outline there's extra lesson plans. So you think about bringing this back full circle in a blended learning format. Students are going through this individually, but how do you bring this back full circle? There's lesson plans you can use that will incorporate what they've learned in the specific modules, in each of the six specific modules or lessons, and have a whole group activity where they're taking that and put it, putting it into application. So there's extra offline lessons. There's answer keys. Uh, that's really helpful. I, I had you know, in my inclusion class, some students needed less answer choices or I needed to read the questions out loud for them again. You have that ability. There's also standards alignment documents and a glossary. The course outline is going to show you it's something really easy for or easy way for you to get an idea of what's covered in each lesson. Uh, if you have to put your board protocol or submit lesson plans, it's going to tell you in the designing the ultimate prototype lesson. Here are the topics covered a description of the actual module, and then the learning objectives. Students will be able to X, Y, Z. So it has that for all of the modules. There's an activity built in. Here's an example of one of the lesson plans that uh, for one of the lessons for, you know, uh, the per building the perfect playlist. It has um, reflection questions you can ask, an extension activity. So there's just a, a lot of extra resources you can use as well. There's a more comprehensive curriculum guide. So this is gonna show you in a more thorough aspect what is covered in each of the lessons. So it's a full breakdown of how the course flows. It's going to have more information about the pre-survey they take um, and just all different types of information about the careers that they get introduced to. Here's the full list of the careers they will get introduced to. So it's great just to have all that career information available here as well for you to look at. And again, here's, a, here's the glossary. So this can be helpful to, uh, you know, for your word wall or the words of the day, just the way for you to have an idea of some of the content or, or definitions, I should say, for um, what is covered in the course. So the, reason, the teacher center has 
Uh, you can click resources to learn about the resources. Viewing a course is how you would uh, demo the course as a student. Uh, main thing though when you sign up is to click create class. What it's going to do is, or what it should be doing, is, sorry about that. You're gonna click on the green create class button and you're going to um, click create class and what it's going to do is it will ask you to name your class. I'm gonna call it Endeavor One. You're gonna choose a start date, the number of students, the grade level, and you're gonna click create class. It's gonna give you a code that the students will use to sign up. The students are gonna do the same process you did, um, going to everfi.net, typing in the code, and they will gain access that way. So it's a similar setup to Google Classrooms uh, in terms of registering. And if you have multiple classes, you would make block two, block three, block four, and they would each have a different code. There's a button right here that says reports. This is your grade book. So this is gonna be where you go to view your grades. So this is just my demo class. That's why there's no uh, grades here listed, but it's gonna have the name of the module or lesson. It's gonna tell you what the student's grades were, if they were certified, which means they passed all the lessons with a 70 or above average. And then again, you can print out a certificate for the students as well. You can download the grades as a CSV file if that helps you with uploading it to a gradebook system you have. So the um, classes button is where you would go to view a list of the classes you've made and it would have the registration codes saved there. Students will show you the list of the names of the students in your particular class. The reports button is gonna be where you go to view grades and progress. And then courses has a list of all of our available course, the, the courses on your dashboard this brings you back to. Um, so again, and then the resources button is where you can check out uh, all the additional resources available. One pretty cool thing, I don't know if there's questions there, but we have a button, it says invite a teacher. If you think this might be relevant for another cohort you have, whether they're in your school or not, uh, they could be in another district, they could be at your school, just fill out their name and information, they'll get an email saying, Joe Smith thinks you should try X, Y, or Z. We have a really great incentive where educators who refer a new teacher will receive a $15 Amazon gift card for any new teacher that signs up and uses, a, that, and uses our programs. It's also a button here that says support. Um, it's gonna have a list of uh, who your specific schools manager is. We have information about scholarship opportunities, standards alignment, and just things like that, which will help you through the process. I mentioned we have other courses that would be clicking on the catalog button. This will show you an overview of every resource we have available that you can access as well. I'm gonna jump back to my presenter slide view. Um, so the instructions are gonna be here. You're gonna click everfi.net and click register. You're gonna find your state and school. If you're, there was somebody at a community college or if you're at a, a school who's not in our system, you can click can't find your school and it will uh, enable you to sign up anyway. This is the profile you get asked to fill out. Um, from a technology perspective, again, it works on desktops, laptops, um, iPads, typically prefer using you know, Chrome, making sure you have the, the most updated version. If you're using Internet Explorer, make sure it's a more recent version, but uh, hopefully you're using like Chrome or Firefox or Safari. We have a strong team in Illinois. So, I, you know, these resources are great, they're free, but support is also really helpful as well. A lot of the times when I was a teacher and I had to call a 1-800 number to contact the person at Study Island, it would take a long time to get connected with them. Um, you have a local person in Illinois that you can reach out to directly via email or phone call. They know a lot about your state. They might be working with teachers in your district already. They know a lot about our content and we're always here for support. Never hesitate to reach out if one of, if one of these people is your support person and contacts you. 
Um, just some information, we offer scholarship opportunities. So for students who complete any of our programs are eligible to win a $1,000 529 college savings scholarship. Even if they're in eighth grade or seventh grade or sixth grade, they can still be eligible to win. Um, they will just have to use it before they turn 30. That's the parameters for a 529 savings scholarship. They would have to complete all the lessons and write a personal reflection about what they've learned. It's a great way to also have a culminating activity where students write about what they've learned from going through the course. All right, any other uh, specific questions about the process, the company, the course or resource or anything as a whole? If you wanna chat that in. Um, last thing is I know data is really important for educators. Uh, we wanna also let you know that over the summer, we will aggregate all the data and show you specifically in your district what the impact was overall. So you'll be able to see the individual student scores as they go through the course. But over the summer, we can send you, and it's completely free, a report that will show in the uh, you know, Edwardsville School District how many students completed the program, what was the average pre and post assessment, how did their attitudes and behaviors change about STEM from going through the course. So it's something for you to get an idea of what the attitudinal and behavioral changes are after taking the course, something that will be are uh, helpful for your administrators as well who might be curious about the efficacy of the program. But yeah, big picture, this is something that will create time for you in the classroom, which is something I never heard uh, when a principal asked me if I was thinking about doing X or Y or Z. It was always meant, it always seemed like an additional thing I needed to do and time was a finite resource. So I hope you try this out. It will free up time for you. It will engage students and it will provide them with a lot of really good uh, ways to learn about the application of STEM and career paths related to it that will hopefully spark their interest. Yeah, students getting ready for more post-secondary career pathways. Um, are any schools implementing this program after school? Yes, Lana, um, it's available whether you're, I was at a boys and girls club um, a couple of weeks ago in normal Illinois doing a training with educators. So um, it's possible for you to use after school. Some of you might think, oh, you know, my daughter or son or niece or nephew might be interested in using it. You can sign up and have them register under your class as well. Um, if you feel like this is something you would want them to try out too. There's no limit in terms of who can use it or in what capacity. All right, uh, tomorrow when you get the email uh, from Jenna, it's gonna have my contact information. Please let me know if um, uh, you have any questions and I, will, I can redirect you to your local contact. You know schools are using this over the summer. It's something that um, I always share information with, to, with schools or for after school programs or for robotics clubs. Um, Lana, if you're curious about if your specific school or anyone in your district is using, you can follow up and email me that as well and I can let you know it's possible that some educators in your district or school are using already. I can let you know that information too. But it's something you can use over the summer as well. We also are always adding and updating the, pro the programs that we have. So this is not stagnant. We've added the data champions and game design module this year based off of feedback from educators because it's something that students just really love learning about. I think that's it. All right, uh, again, please reach out if you have any questions. Um, have a great final seven days, hopefully no more than seven days before the end of the semester. Um, and I hope that I get to meet you. I travel around Illinois a lot and present at conferences and work with school districts. So hopefully uh, I can connect with you all afterwards and please share this with others. Awesome, thanks so much, Ben. Um, I actually used Everfy, I think I told you, um, when I was in the classroom. And I wanna say you guys used to have a digital citizenship one. Yes. Yes, no? Okay, so yep. I actually, um, my older students, um, I would do that series with them as well. So um, some great resources, um, free ding, ding, ding. So that's always good. 
Um, and yeah, so awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking everybody through that. Thanks for showing everybody the teacher dashboard. That's always a um, good thing to see. Um, if you don't mind, can you pop back to those two slides? I think they're in the beginning of your slide deck. Sure. And yes, I know, Lana, the hardest part of my job is convincing people that it's free, but we work with partners who, uh, who want to really, and for specifically for this course, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers sponsors this program for schools. It's a way for them to say, we are helping get thousands of students in Illinois uh, educated about this program. It's their community outreach initiative. We just drive it for them. That's always the question is, how is it free? What's the catch? And there, there is not. Um, so it's great. It's, it's a way for us to help drive different types of corporations, outreach initiatives. Jen, is this the slide you want me to be on? Yes, please. Thank you. So um, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I did want to let you all know, if you haven't seen it already, next week's Wednesday webinar, the IDEA staff, can you guess which one is me there? Um, the IDEA staff is going to um, be holding the webinar, and it is going to be the winter win it all webinar. So um, we are going to be doing a little bit of a 12 days of holiday theme and um, uh, introducing you guys to 12 resources and having 12 giveaways. So make sure you come for that. You have to be present to win. Um, so sign up for that register at, uh, or that webinar at bit.ly slash win dash web um, or just go on our website and you can register there. Um, the next one, if you don't mind clicking, after the holidays, um, we are going to be having a, uh, the third in our series with Class Intercom on January 8th um, from 4 to 5 p.m., Five Steps to Building a Student Social Media Team at Your School. Um, so you can see the bit.ly there or just uh, answer the emails or go on our website. You can register for that one as well. Um, and we would love to see you guys at those two upcoming webinars. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat window that link for your PDH. Again, that is going to be available until midnight tonight. So go ahead and click through um, and uh, sign up for your PDHs there. Um, and that's about it. So if there isn't any other questions, um, Ben and I will hang out here for just a few more minutes to see if anybody pops anything in. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining us today, and uh, we hope to definitely see you next Wednesday. Ben, thanks so much again, and uh, I'm sure we will uh, see more to come from EverFi um, as they are one of our newest partners. So thanks so much. And thank you all again. Ben's email address. Uh, ben, if you want to throw it in there, oh, otherwise sure. it is going to come in the email that comes from us tomorrow. So the email that has uh, my email. the webinar link. Yep, 318 For good measure, there's my email address and phone number. And again, never hesitate to call, text, email me um, at all. It's, 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 my, it's my job, and I love it. And this webinar will also be posted, as all of our webinars are, on our webpage. If you go under the learn, um, the learn menu item, there's a link there for Wednesday webinars, and um, so tomorrow about noonish, this one will go up there um, as well as get emailed out to everybody who registered. So at any time, though, um, you don't have to save that email. Just go to our webpage, and um, you'll be able to find this uh, webinar added there. So. Ever, will ever I be using any new programs? I've been using the program for years and I love it. Yeah, we always add and update courses um, regularly. And it's really done based off of teachers' feedback uh, and interests. So um, something that, uh, just an example of it, social emotional learning is a big need. We added a resource, uh, and sorry, social emotional learning is a big need. And we added a resource last year that focused on teaching students at grades two, three, and four about compassion and growth mindset and empathy. So that's something that we added recently. Uh, we always have new things in the works. Uh, 
and the digital wellness resource that Jenna had alluded to before, we update content as well. So the digital, digital wellness resource became a little outdated. There's a lot that happened in the area of interacting online. So we wanted to make sure that we updated that course completely to make sure it was, it was up to date and uh, more relevant for educators. And that course covers keeping yourself safe online, the excessive use of screens and how that impacts uh, your mind, body. So there's always updates being done to our, uh, our portfolio of courses. Right now, I think we have 20. We have a new one coming out in February that's gonna focus on early literacy. And I can send you that information as well um, if, if you want more information about everything that we have. Okay, well, that looks like that's about it on the questions. So thanks again so much, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Ben, for joining us. Thanks for all of this fantastic information tonight. And I'm going to give you guys back four. Oh, oh, that's a thumbs up. Good. Okay, that wasn't a one second. That was a thumbs up. Great job. Um, so I'm going to give you back four whole minutes here. So you get four minutes back to yourself. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll hopefully see you next week. Um, and everybody will win, win, win. So thanks, guys. Have a good night.